the hot spots. We are coming to you like Most popular was situations in the country. The Graham and here they didn't buy it. They have reached a level to say, God, thank you. And the situations of what are happening to me is important. Like you see anybody that you want to be Madala, or you want to be a Stoko or Mazizi, and there is a price you pay. And so you also want the situations you have paid a price. To be where he is today, I know the people are very good. Many of you here say you're young and play football, but you know the men when they call football. This day, gentlemen, we are gratified to see you here in the situation that once you were able to have extended the goal last week Saturday, and then we are at his place. This man will so be filling the nation with good tasted bread for breakfast. Oh, it was a joy, it was a joy. And so at this stage, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored, as the moderator rightly said, that the chairman have empowered him to make sure that we hear from this man, word of the politics, word of the situation, eyes, information. What is it that you want to know is what you know today. Drop your systems, open your mind, use your head to calculate and make the judgment. I know he's thrilled to come on the podium, but let's set the pace. The pace and this man and what is about to happen in this country, many of you have not seen it. And what is going on, you don't know it. I know what we speak from, and when they may have here, it means a whole lot. And to now hold you hostage, as we sit our seat, and to usher Mr. Blight, I'm honored to stand by this man in his transformation and not his transformation but the forward march of this country to see it the way he wants to see it and from the background and to put behind us the history of yesterday and move on a new path to the person will determine the future tomorrow yes. and at this stage we are glad and honored to have mr pastor play at this forum and we will listen and listen tell me well coordinate your actions and thoughts with respect to what you want to see and act it will be within the confines of the transformation of the person here, not the past. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Liberia is actually not short of men. We have produced in different fields. The only black man on earth to win war best came from Liberia. What a powerful history. In one year, they see man won European best and Africa's best. Liberia have placed Africa ahead of many continents by producing the first female president. Well, we are people of history, never shut of great men. Aji Pompon is one of the reference to sacrifice for nation. I'm honored also to be introduced by such a sacrificial figure. And thank you, sir. I have made this place my abode. CEO have been my reliance over the years when there are issues that I don't have money to put in the newspaper and I want Liberia to hear it. I creep from wherever I am, come to CEO when, I, when they gave me the chance and express my view, all of a sudden it's all over the news. So CEO have been a contributing factor to me personally in giving my views to the nation. However, I want to take this time to greet every one of you here present. I know there are people who disappointed, frustrated about my recent action. And it's only because they have not had perfect understanding. I have made myself available today to give you some insight and evidence to my present actions. 
And after you have understood, you can continue your ground to be frustrated, to be confused, to be mad, or change. And like he said, it's going to be interactive. I will want the tough questions. I'm the one who do not run away from my action. I always said, bravery is not about the action. Bravery is about accepting the consequences or the consequence for your action. And so whatever you have heard about me, I have come to you to be crucified. I did not come here to be praised. So thank you again for the time. I see one of the, the journalists who went to my house and carried me live, one of the first person that carried my program live. You hear this one? Oh, you're doing radio. Praise the Lord. So, I came to Monovia today from Magibi County to complain threats of death against my life. Former subordinates and colleagues of mine who and myself fought for the same side, the same purpose, and Jida, a few weeks ago, and they were spotted in my confine, in my community. So that was you there, Reverend Nas, the National Executive Chairman of this place. Just wanted to have the National Executive Chairman. So you're welcome, I already met you instead of things. Let the media continue. So when you are not here, I was telling CEO thank you for extending my view to the country. Whenever there is no money to go to the media, once I reach the CEO, the whole nation can hear me. So I was saying, I was receiving threats. I've been receiving threats over the past two weeks from former subordinates and colleagues of mine, people of whom and myself fought for the same faction. For some reason today,
What folks say they are just people people's life life come to the life from the, the headquarters of the Center for Intellectual Opinion of Seoul. As we speak, the forum come to the monetary stem still as one of the individuals who disrupted uh, the session when the forum uh, turned evangelist just on Milton's life was addressing the forum. So, as I concluded my greeting, I forgot the folk asking, even though I recognized the woman, because it was an excitement for her to be brave, to enter the compound and say I was facing bombs. So, among many women, she was the only woman, maybe that's why I pick her up. But I also want to extend my thanks and appreciation to the four experts for being here today. To continue, I said, two weeks now, I have been receiving threats from former colleagues and subordinates of whom I myself fought for the same faction. It was on the 6th of this month, October, 6th of October, when a press conference was held at the Monobia City Hall in the office of the Lord Major Jefferson Koji by the Major himself introducing a young man who claimed he was he was a partisan of Unity Party and became disappointed, frustrated by Unity Party recruiting foot soldiers to insist on winning the, re the election and if they do not win the election, they will start war. And the names he called, my name was a monk. To prove his point, he said he was taken to my house, that is in 72nd, Johnsonville, and Mount Barkley. This young man said he came to my house and he was tortured. Even though after being tortured, he walked out freely. <laughs> and he realized or recognized that I was facing patrol bombs. After that, I called the fourth estate. The fourth estate went to my house and I took them from room to room in my house. I took them to the dormitory because I'm helping child or, 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 or drugs addicts, disadvantaged young people. I'm helping them to recover since 2007. That's the only work I have to do. That's the only ministry I have. And I took them to the rooms of the females. I took them to the rooms of the males. They entered the bathrooms and every part of those dormitories. I took them to my bakery where I was introducing my a very special bread that is strange to this society. And in fact, because of his acquisition on me, this was the seventh, I called the bread the bomb bread. You will see that bread on the market very soon. And we we'll call it the bomb bread because it came at the same time where I was accused of facing bomb. <laughs> I told them also 
to the art centers where the children are facing art like this. This is my name. They're facing things like this. Children who were dying from drugs are redeemed and turned to different kinds of engineers. After the journalists have certified their search, they left me. The next day, on the 8th of August, of, of October, this month, I received a call from a young man in Swedru. The call has been played on different social media and it's right here in my phone. And the call recognized me as Chief Butt Naked. And I said, sorry, I am no more Butt Naked. I'm Evangelist Joshua Milton Bly. And he says, sorry, Pastor Bly, I call you because it's a serious issue. In fact, he said, good afternoon. I said, no, it's evening. What part of the world will you be when you eat Grand Gide? Is it afternoon in Grand Gide? But he was shaking out of fear. And I said, what happened? He said, you know, Connor Zidi? I said, Gono Zidi. He said, you say, you know Zidi? I said, Zidi, Zidi, Zidi. The only Zidi I know that I think he will know is Gono Zidi. No, first of all, I asked him, who is this? He called his name. And I could not remember. He said, a young man that drive the dream, the green pickup from Swedru to Grange, from Swedru to Greenville, that always pass him to your farm to go eat. And I said, oh, 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 oh. Then I called his name. Then I said, what happened? He said, you know Zidi? And I know the only Zidi you know is Kono Zidi. I said, is that Kono Zidi from Hester? He said, yes. I said, what happened? He said, he came to our cafe. He came to our environment and is recruiting men to come to Monrovia to deal with you. Because they say you are facing, you are recruiting men, you are training men to disturb the government, his exact words. And I said, wait. The phone went off, I called back. And I said, wait, take your time. I said, where are you? He said, in Swedru. Where part of Swedru? Where about quarter? So when you say happy, he said, Zidi, Colonel Zidi is recruiting the Gambians. In Unimo, when we say Gambians, there were a group of fighters who when they receive bullet wound, they raise them up to general. And those group, anything they come to your house, they see loot that thing. Anything they see, they will take it. They call themselves Damien. The TBRC. They are the top brown ruling council. They are the one who will go to any community, cause any trouble there that are free because they believe they were wounded for the surveillance sake so they can live and feed on the surveillance. Bunch of looters. Maybe one time fighters, but after receiving gun wounds, they cannot go to the front. That's how they survive. He said, the Gambians, they are coming, they are going to the palace now, now, as I speak. In Swedju, when they say the palace is where all male used to live, the correction palace, in that palace now is where the superintendent lay, Honorable Kai Fale. He said, yes, they are going to the palace. I said, now as we speak, I have the recording. Those of you who will want to have the recording privately, we give it to you. And we give it. Is there a way to listen to it? Yes. Oh, okay, good. And so, he said they're going to the palace. They are carrying men. They're bringing men to you to Monrovia. From there, the young man started begging. Please, please, sir. Don't go back to war. That young man also was a fighter. He was very young, one of the child soldiers. He was fighting for General Jalo. He was behind General Jalo. 
and the man was afraid. Please don't go back to Violet. The way I see the men are coming, and what have you? And I say, okay, don't worry. But I want, I asked him a question on the tip. I said, when we were fighting, even though he was small, was I a looter? You heard one day that I looted anybody thing? He said, no. I said, those Gambians, TBROC, when they did something somewhere that Roosevelt Johnson or other people are afraid of them, who goes to arrest them? He said, that you, you and your group. I said, thank you. I said, if, as a rebel general, I had principles, and I could not go against those principles, will I go against my gospel and preaching principle today? The young man was quiet for some time, and he said, no, sir, I don't think so. I said, so I have no intention for fighting. I have no intention for violence. But I want you to also know, I have 103 children in my fence. Young man, if somebody come to kill them, except I am overpowered and I am not able to stop them. But when God gave me the power to stop them from killing these children, I will stop them. Nobody will come in my confine and kill me for nothing. <laughs> and actually, actually, except God, no stupid man can kill me. No, no one. First of all, I live my life in accordance to principle. And the first principle in life is first preservation. So to my house, I have 16 view CCTV since the president announced that Liberia was not safe, we should protect ourselves. So I installed a 16 view CCTV. Four of them is facing 1,000 meters square from my house. So from 1,000 meters, 10 football field, double. When you hit anywhere, I will not make up the pressing face where I will see an object coming. If I have interest, I will try to view zoom and see who that. <laughs> <laughs> to the four corners of my fence, four, another four cameras showing there. Then the eight cameras is in the bathroom, because I have boys and girls there, I don't want them to slip in the bathroom to do wrong. I have some in the kitchen, in the dining hall, so that people will not steal over their friend food. I have some in the classes, so that people will respect the teachers and don't act rude on the teachers because they were they are disgruntled children that we bring in and try to help. So we need to make them to know that there are eyes on them. So eight of them within the compound. Besides that. I am confided, I'm a preacher, since 28 years now, I've given my life to Christ, but I'm still fit. And everything I knew before, I still know it. Naturally, I was born a giant. I was born 18 pounds. It would take a man to physically beat me. It would take many to physically beat me. Even in this age of man. <laughs> and where I have tested my strength is the fact to know how to do evil and choose not to do it. In fact, that's real strength. That you know evil and you choose not to do it. All the horses in Central flashlight to enter them when I was stealing. In this town. My colleagues, some of them still stealing. Some of them not die. 
And so there are a lot of security ideas that I have. It will take a man who will be intentional, he has to be tactical, he has to be deliberate, and he has to have real foes to kill me. <laughs> so that's why I told a young man. That was the background for telling the young man that I cannot be in my house. Somebody come to kill me. In fact, I believe in my philosophy. If you allow a three-year-old child to juke you with nerf or groom man and you die, me you committed suicide. You wanted a child to you wanted you wanted to die. You wanted were you able to kill yourself? So you allow a three-year-old child to kill you. So when I allow those men who, who threatened my life to kill me, a suicide committed. So nobody should be afraid. I told it no man, I told a young man to never be afraid. After that, two days later, I received a call from a pastor friend. And he told me a member who is a police officer called me. He told me that there are men, after I received that telephone call from Swedju, led by Kai Fale, who are in town to kill you. So please be careful. Leave your house. I have all of those recordings. I did not leave my house. The night that he told me, the next day, from my CCTV, I saw two pickups packed to my junction. All right. I called the communities, young man, because I had a vigilante in the community. I told them in rock culture era because there were armed robberies that used to go on over there and the people would run from their house to my to my fence and I said no need to be rolling let's form a vigilante and we formed that vigilante so I told the vigilante before we reached there those two pickups have gone that very night I went live to express my frustration and to tell the world what was going on. The next day, the 103 children had to go home to their parents. Where parents were crying, you're helping my child, how can you allow them to leave, and what have you. Now, now, as we're speaking, parents are calling and asking me to take their children back. Even though some of the children said on live camera, I prefer to die here than to go die in the ghetto because drugs is equal to death. And, but I still let them go. I let them go because I don't want anyone to come attack me and maybe they miss me and hit anybody child. So the children left. When the children left the next day is when I start receiving these calls that are threatening me to kill me. Well, one of the reasons that I think that press conference was held against me was because of my pronouncement to support the rescue mission and called myself rescue soldier. <laughs> and that has been the frustration. That has been the frustration of most of my friends and colleagues who are pastors today. Why will you say soldier? Well, I've been answering that individually. Those of you who have that same question, I want you to know even the Bible says, I should not work as surveillance. They describe the joining of the gospel as a military joining. And I go into ghetto to take people, children from there against drug laws. It's war I'm fighting, taking those children from the street. Besides that, the Bible says Nehemiah was in the palace eating chicken until he heard the description of his nation Jerusalem that the gates were broken. He said when he realized that the gates and the walls were falling, he had no appetite to eat. And I can tell you, Liberian, our gates 
and our walls are falling. In Bible, when they say walls, they talk about security. And it's security in three dimensions. The Bible said they said it's like a Satan that is broken down. Or the man without a self-control or a spirit is like a Satan that is breaking down and without war. The Satan that is breaking down without war. In Bible days, war represented three security. The first security war represents is the security of commerce. If you do not have war, anybody can come into your country and buy and sell at any time. So you will not have control over your finances. Liberia is poor because there is no walls. No security, no financial security. The second thing that will happen when the city do not have a war is that you will have no culture. Men will come from different nations, sleep with your daughters, and born children of different natures. Liberia have no culture. The tear and the major security when the world is broken down is like anyone will come into your country to attack you anytime. Because the Bible says you must take to account the strength of a man before you attack it. When your city have no walls, anyone can attack you anytime. That's why all kinds of things attacking Liberia. Ebola came and attacked Liberia. Corona also attacked Liberia. Now the major attack is drugs and kush mm. Mm. that is killing the children, the people children. And we have series of evidence. Unlike other governments, it happens but not equal to this government. For this reason, we stood up, we said we will not eat until our walls are built, are built back. And when Nehemiah came to build the wall, that's why I brought up the new, the new Nehemiah. The Bible says he had one hand with a tool to rebuild, and the other hands with a sword. Whatever it would take to bring this nation to the place of true security, politically, we will follow it. When I stood up and see that there have been projection of fear from the ruling party, recruiting people, calling them Sabu units, giving them arms in time. And I see election is coming, everybody was afraid. So that rescue soldier, I want you to know it was intentional. I said it to give confidence to people that lawlessness is the cheapest, smallest, weakest material is not as strong as good and civilization that's so why i've come to employ you liberian civilization is stronger than disgruntledness the only thing evil is always lousy i will give you the example in a close then you can ask your questions how you can live in a community central monovia here now if you even check 20 ghettos Put all the people in that 20 ghettos together in Central Monrovia, half percent of the good people in Central Monrovia. But those small, wicked people, those small, disgruntled people are so lousy that they can make you to be running home 7 o'clock. And the only reason they make you to run home 7 o'clock because they are lousy. If you just speak equal to what they're speaking, all those ghettos will close just now. I have seen women closing ghettos. They just got angry and they said, This ghetto to New York Joshua today, they will not sleep there. Women. So they're not strong. Evil is never strong. It's just lousy. So I decided to speak loud to give Liberia the confidence for which they use today and they were able to go to vote. We have come to tell Liberia again go to vote. Take your decisions. If you want the, the ruling establishment, that's your decision. If you don't want them, that's your decision. But go to vote. Even though today what brought me to town is the complaint to the American Embassy, European Union, ECOWAS, Justice Ministry, and other national stakeholders. And so I have come 
to bring a verbal complaint to show that have been the place, a platform to say ideas to the nation that my life have been under threat and I've just come to tell you that this is what's going on with me. Thank you. Work, folks, that works. Chuck submit and plan about stagnation. It's now question time. The presiding will be taking question from the audience. Chairman, attention, please. Thank you. We have guests here as CEO. The entire leadership is here to receive the guests. I never expected uh, Minister Blay today. Unfortunately, he has made that news to us. And he came back today after having spoken with all the diplomats. He said he was coming to see you today to inform this body about threat on his life and perhaps his property and his comfort. You've heard. Around this time of election, when we are being cautioned by our international partners that and drums of war must not be the interest of Liberia and Liberia. Around this time, we must all be drumming for peace. Like all Liberians demonstrated during the election, the first round of the election, you went to the ballot boxes, peacefully you conducted yourself. You contradicted Roman that came before the election. But during election day, there will be blood spill on the street. There will be disturbance, disruption of the peaceful process. But we didn't see it because you orderly conducted yourself. For that, we are not asking you to give a hand of applause to yourself. I think there is a better occasion to ask you to do so. Be a for yourself. And so, around this time of the second round of election, what interests us most is for people coming here on our platform to speak the message of peace and not to draw for war. But he said, threats has been brought upon his life and he has come to reveal it to us as the call of conscious people. What he has said is open to you for your judgment and your reasoning. It is only better for the sake of the forum that we open the line so you can interact, so we can reason together. Because you've been listening to him. The folk Esther is here also to capture the movement. It came along. This movement was not planned for seal. And I was on the field. Someone just called me more than once. And you got guests in your absence and uh, the coach here is not here. I said, but let me hurry myself there and see how I can cover the program. And when I came, I met you already on the step. So remember, I you, I beg you, please don't feel offended. They say, oh, we are guests. And the chairman was out. It was not an occasion planned for. It's impromptu. However, Mr. Blahi, as always, you are welcome. This is sealed. This place was established to allow for all view to be expressed here. It was, it, was, it was established to allow for views to be expressed or hinder. The only thing you take note of is the line in the Constitution. Order, please. In the line in the Constitution, that what you say you are accountable for. That's the line. And so we will open the line. We will interact with our guests. We will begin with member of the fourth estate who came along with the guests. You will please call your your medium you report for or you represent, and then you be very deliberate, clear with your concern. So therefore, there we come back to the audience. So we begin with you. Okay. Thank you so much. My name is. There you go. My name is George Mumu, and I report for Talk TV Media Network. 
And so, Honorable Blahi, I want to appreciate you and the fact that these threats you're talking about uh, upon your life, I mean, you're following the referral path ways, that is to complain to the Justice Ministry. But my concern has to do with the 103 persons that uh, you are rehabilitating and that uh, their process yet to be completed, now they've been sent back to the community. I'm concerned about the security threats. Why if uh, the Justice Ministry and other partners through a security friendly conversation decide to maybe provide security so that these children can, I mean, go through the rehabilitation process, what would be your stand? So we can do the two to our own. All right. Okay. Well, so yeah, come here. Right, thank you. My name is Pius. I report for ABC Radio in Liberia. My concern has to do with, you said, you only went there when you received out no cause or that no threat on your life. You do a search in your company, what have you. Have you been able to communicate with the national security to go there also and do check in your company regarding the face of your bonds? Thank you. Okay, Evan. Who else? Freelance? It's okay? We are finished. And so, yes, uh, once the Justice Ministry, who is the supervisor for security in this country, can provide for me security and assure me that those children's lives are secure, I will definitely bring those children back. The parents, as we were even in the car, I was driving, coming. Parents are told my gate, they brought two of the children back. And I'm telling them, I cannot take those children. I know what wickedness is. I was once a perpetrator of evil. And I know evil thinks nothing but destruction. I'm not going to endanger the lives of those people. So, if the superintendent of security, the overseer of national security, the policy protector of security in this nation can assure me, give me an address of my letter written to him, and you provide the security for us, those children will come back one hour after his pronouncement or assurance for security and your question again is what has security have you to go there to be kept in your company yes i invited the police from man Barkley, the crd and another man they went to the head of the crd and another man they went there to check in my company thank you so we now turn to the audience. Let me give you a yabba. Oliver. So my name is Oliver Yabba, and this uh, the, the media guy there earlier jumped into ahead of me, but I just like to throw this as an appeal. You know, I'm a witness of uh, the work that you do. I remember when I used to live in Police Academy in 2006. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you used to even practice with us when I, when I was. I was a youth leader in the community back in 2006 when we started taking in those uh, uh, former fighters into your compound even before you constructed the one in my body. Now, I'm also a witness to the fact that you sent those children home. I got a sister whose son had been at that rehab place for a good while. Right now, the boy is with us in La Paz. He had to come back home. He even called his mother and say, oh, uh, ever since they said our our parents should come for oil, and you don't, <laughs> well, I don't to work. She work at the APM terminal. So, my appeal to you is, look, the election is just about two, three weeks away. Even if the Justice Ministry doesn't guarantee or send you a letter, you've been doing this for the sake of humanity. Like you said, you are a former perpetrator of violence, you went through the war. But when you started working with these young people far back as 2006, 
and it was something that we really appreciate that somebody who himself is part of this, have been part of this, we take on initiative to, to rehabilitate young people. It was a good venture. So let not the situation of now deter you. So even if the government does not give you the security that you are talking about, as soon as the election is over, please reconsider to take these young people back in. It's good for our society because currently I work on a program with a group called NEPI, and we are also involved with training. We provide CBT counseling for young people. And we know what is happening with this country when it comes to drug addiction. So you cannot relate, you cannot give up, you cannot give in on this point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Delining. I'm Ishmael J. Delining. And uh, honestly, I, I appreciate the work you've been doing. Uh, I can admit to that uh, the land space that Senator Sanjusa have in Mount Barclay there, I think a uh, portion of it will do temporarily to build a structure to maintain those those less fortunate or less privileged individuals. But at a certain point in time, unfortunately, I you can uh, the, the information regarding them so they start going to communities and start becoming a threat to those residents, which of course is unfortunate. And just the only thing is that looking at uh, the number of the number of you uh, the number of young folks that you recruited back then uh, because of drug addiction, the number were very high than now. Like for you to say that uh, in terms of drug abuse. I increased uh, than yesterday. Uh, for that, I want to take a sign on that because uh, you all know that, and all of us know that coming from war, there are a lot of victims, and, 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 and others was also uh, 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 spoon feed or uh, mesmerized by others to join into drug addiction. So, for that, there was a huge increase than now because now you uh, know that the government is fighting drugs to the extent where even the drugs laws have been passed and all of those things are drugs. We have seen security apparatus arresting people in this government on a higher extent. With the exception of even the drug law being passed. So that tells you that the government is only huge to fight drugs. So looking at looking at past regime and that of regime of recent, we can simply say that this government is in strongly support. Like what you are doing as well. So uh, in my mind, uh, we think that in 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 your quest of security apparatus, uh, uh, being informed as to the information you get in relation to your life, even me, I would also do that as well. Uh, they can also take you from that. And let us all come together collectively to combat drugs instead of being more political in this drug fight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, my name is Gabriel B. Masai. I thank you all my people for this day. And uh, Mr. Bly, thank you for coming. Since Autobots were all in Ghana's new project, uh, Archie Brother, and you, you did something in my life, although a lot of people will accuse you, but you did something in my life I will never forget. At Grace 2, my team was tough, we killed a lot of food. And you guys, we heard the same bond again coming. And he made me ready to Chris soon kid. And everybody said, oh, that's just a lot of men, that's just a lot of men. I left us at ILO. And the guy said, hello me. And he gave me to you. 
and you will say, look, I know your name sitting here. You don't own, say, look, your feel look familiar. I said, actually, brother, for you joining. He said, okay, I'm going to the barrier. I was in the barrier until after the April 6th. Thank you for that. But what I will say to you and to all the Liberians, the war that we fought in this country, a moth war. If anybody feel that violent will come in this country again, will not happen. God has already signed it. And those Amen. that are preaching, the pastors, the reverend, for the back of the mind, this country, and I'm saying that today, the only world that will fight in this country to end the body, that mother will do this, will do this, will run them, that all will happen in this country. So, the young man, I advise you for you not to take to the old days. And I urge, and I believe, the Almighty guide you. The Almighty will guide, guide you. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, whether it's for Unity Party, whether it's for CDC, what is that the solution? So, Mr. Blighty, as long as you have given your life to God, look up to God. God will guide you. And anything you're doing, the children, they say they should go home. Take it from me. I'm speaking as a man. Or what came back with my mind? What the all about the Almighty is telling me? Give me the children back. Nothing will happen to you. Nothing. Nobody. Trust me. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the recognition. My name is Mwame Mba. Let me say thank you to you, big brother. We were small, small, we hear your name. And trust me, I am a Muslim. Allah says the best among you people is the one who repent sincerely. So for those of you who hear say they may fear war in preaching, God will not listen to you. You lie. And the best people are God love. To conclude, don't carry that people children back, please. You know why? The, your goodness towards these children. They will not allow no one to attack you, trust me. So let it remain to their parents until the government can assure you that nothing will happen to them. Lastly, call out not last long in the work of those who follow them. Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> That's the word! Wow. Mm. Mm. We'll take only three more. Three more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, my news. Rabbit, before the couple of us, not ever move it. Thank God, people get tested. Face the camera. Let me appreciate you. Face the camera. Why you think? Eh? For our children. We appreciate you. But let me get on. You know, unless you know you say people are are only on left, they only after you. People want to kill you. I remember the last time to the war. I wonder how much more. I think you remember. You kill a man and you want that, you usually do that. You want to put a body in the way that we used to drink with the whole entire community of, for, for surviving on that way. You remember the lady that sat on the way, I think I respect that story. The lady that sat on the way, I think I
the forum have come to the monetary institute. We are coming to you live from the Center for Intellectual Exchange, CEO on Kerry Street, where in fact there is Jackson Milton Bly, Alex Kotniki, came to address the Akos body, uh, the threat in his life from a no man. So he decided to everybody explain his side of the story to Dick's body. Dick's is people's online TV. I am to Mingo WDG Dick's live broadcast from the Center for Intellectual Obedience. Keep following senior comments and recommendations.
an instrument with testimony, the name of Mesho, on facing petrol pump and water fuel. So I think in my own mind, it is because of that allegation that was leveled against you by you facing uh, petrol pump. It is why you are coming up saying that people are after your life. I think these are my concerns. Chalo!
Come out today. Where do you stay? As a child of God, where do you stay? Claiming that you are a rescue soldier, where do you stay? You poverty. You see, that's what lawlessness is. If you give lawlessness credence, it grows. Because we want war. Because we fought war, there was no persecution. The violence increasing okay, on a daily basis. Okay, anything. And the violence in this country will continue to increase until we allow the war crime court to persecute us. <laughs> Senator to deprive herself from running again to put some of us in jail. <laughs> Jefferson Kochi will not be importing gun from India, from China. <laughs> Jackson journalists, this people news online. We are coming to you live from the biggest intellectual forum, Daxio on Kerry Street, where evangelist Jackson Milton Fly, popular known as Bob Nicky, came to address this uncle's body, informing them about threat against his life by unknown individuals who said because he is supporting the presidential bid of Unity Party Standard Bearer, that's the former Vice President of Baxter, Jokson Yiman Dwaka, in the presidential elections. That is why they are threatening his life to take away his life. That is why today he deeply necessary decided to inform local international panels, including the Ministry of Justice, the U.S. Embassy, the U.N. Coordinator, ECOWAX, and today in its year at CEO on Kirishki. 
I continue. Maybe a drag from your ear. If Madame Sally, Madame Sally, to establish the war crime code. It was there was going to be precedent. But today, those five children, those five analysts, the auditor rather, that were killed, that were murdered, people will be afraid to do the same. If Madame Seri was going to persecute her son for no car money, Seven twelve when I play with the twenty five million I was giving him. So yes, you people are right. Position. But here, ex generals are senators, ex generals are representatives. You encourage violence as a people in this country. I don't, I'm not sad with no politician. I was right here in the seal on this identical bench when I challenged Dara Taylor when he said there was no need for war crime court. Today he pleaded the same thing, war crime court. When Maduba Malu then was saying war crime court, yes, today they say no war crime court. So I am not driven by politicians. Why? How will Liberian take me when I say rescue soldier? Let me answer that question. Very important. Very, very important. You see, I was a witch. I was schooled as a witch. From the age of seven to the age of 11, I went to the school of witchcraft. I gave people food, rice, oil, beans. When they eat that rice, anything I tell them, what do we do? So people will be coming with BZT. When I say move a pregnant woman will take tap to go challenge BZT. So the thing you're doing as Sidisha, the food they gave you under the sacrament tree. <laughs>
said in this forum that people are boring and I may never see them again. They might not be able to listen to radio. So, so, will believe that because I want to buy sentiment, meanwhile I am facing petrol bomb. So I should play this recording. So I will play the recording. They follow. That's why I'm here with it. I'm telling you, I'm But let me tell you to clear your doubt. Huh? I have already reported this to the Justice Ministry and to all the embassies. That's where I came from. So I want you to know. I want you to know that all my life, all my life, I am not a pretender. I don't do things halfway. Never. When I was general butt naked, the reason I took off my clothes is so that when you're able to kill me, kill me. No way for me to run away. As a preacher today, I'm the only preacher who goes everywhere, who has an ex, an ex general, a perpetrator, who goes to every county, including Nima County, who am an arch victim. So if I was afraid of revenge on me, Nima County would not be my favorite place. I bet Senator Prince Johnson now to go to Grand Gila driving yourself. He won't do it. I don't trust his position. Today, the name that is called Prince Johnson supporting Bwaka, that because he is, is his part of war, I wonder if it was the same war strategy that he used to bring CDC to where they are today. <laughs> <laughs> So, it is my responsibility to tell Liberia, no matter what you do, no matter what it takes, this identical nation will be redeemed. Time is going to come. Even your statement that you're making here as you, you will give account for it. Liberia will come to the place of sanity in so much that if you advertise yourself as a naked nude man, you can never run to be senator you will here again. If Liberia was people who believe in consequence, who believe in repercussions, who believe in people like senator, people like Prince Johnson will not be senator. I don't know about Bolcha, but I also know about Yeke Kolumba. I also know about John Bully. They will not be 
representative. But also, when it comes to moral destruction, for the video and the picture that was shown, that our president was naked, that immoral act that he showed, and we voted him, that's what extended to the mansion today that he had wife and girlfriend in one compound. I want to stop here. If you have any other question, you want to conclude, conclude. <laughs> Fox, thanks for following People's News Online from the headquarters of the Center for Intellectual Opinions. Thanks for following. Bye bye for now.